Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Broku no Hero. Today, I want to talk about a video game that is Black Clover Quartet Night. And in my opinion, it is one of the most underrated anime game of all time. And well, that doesn't really mean a lot because a lot of anime games are absolute shit. I mean, look at Jump Force, all the uh, money and collaboration behind all that, and that game is a... I liked it at first, but it turned into a heaping pile of shit really quick. Let's just be real, Jump Force was just a money grab. Now, Black Clover Court and Het Knights feels like the opposite of that, and kind of different for a mainstream anime game where... Pretty much every mainstream anime game I've ever played is almost like the same thing, where you replay through parts of the canon story of said anime, and then get maybe some partially new stuff or some alternate scenarios, and then you can do like online fights or split screen slash co-op fights together. With Black Clover Quartet Knights, that is not the thing here. In fact, it's its own brand new original story that is not part of the, or has not been shown in the Black Clover manga or anime, and its fighting is very, very different. Now I'm going to talk about multiple things like the story, the gameplay, the graphics, and the multiplayer, and kind of tell you why this game is extremely underrated now is by no means an absolutely amazing game, but if you love Black Clover and you love Overwatch, you probably do want this game, and that's how I'll start this. But anyways, I'm going to first start with the story, because that is the first thing I played. And I know when people buy games like these, they just completely beat the story first, and then they get into the multiplayer. So that's what I'm going to be talking about first, is the story of Black Clover Quartet Knights. So, this story takes place directly after the dungeon arc. Directly after Asta, you know, Noel, Mimosa, Luck, and Klaus all fight off Mars of the Diamond Kingdom. And after this, sometime shortly, Yami leads Noel, Fenrir, and Asta into a different dungeon. Yami kind of disappears and then he disappears like into this room of the dungeon and then next out comes a younger version of Yami. This version of Yami is 14 years old so he doesn't have a grimoire and yet what's funny enough is despite being 14 years old and not having his grimoire he barely loses to an Asta plus Noel team up. That shows that he's pretty strong because this is an Asta post dungeon so it's not like Asta from the beginning of the series. This is Asta after six months of training before the Magic Knight's entrance exam, and then getting a new sword and getting even stronger after the fact. So this is a very, very impressive thing for Yami to be 14 and barely lose a 2v1. Now what's really with the story though, is basically there's this man named Lord Freeze who started off as a commoner, but worked his way up to an aristocrat, which is basically, in the world of Black Clover, basically an aristocrat is like, you started as a commoner or a peasant and worked your way up to be like, basically the same level of a noble. The really main difference between nobles and aristocrats is nobles have established houses where they've been around for a while. So aristocrats will usually blend in and become nobles, but an aristocrat is pretty much different from a noble. So Lord Freeze, basically was using a magic item that controlled and manipulated time to basically play the economy and become a very powerful house. The king, of course, did not like this and sent a bunch of nobles and royals to kill him off. And what happens is, is he gives his magic item to his daughter, his soul blends in with the magic item, sends his daughter into the future so that she could not be killed by these nobles. This girl, Karna, would eventually meet this young version of Yami, they would develop a relationship, and that's kind of where the story goes. What happens is, Karna, at times, can be possessed by the spirit of her father, who harnesses extreme hate towards the kingdom, especially nobles and royals. And he plays on the motivations of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, and he joins forces with them, trying to bring forth the Blood Moon, which would basically let Karna, or technically Lord Freeze, who's a harness a bunch of magic power, 
which he could then destroy the entire kingdom. And in fact, there is a timeline in this game where Freeze literally destroys the entire kingdom. Like, with, with an attack, destroys the entire kingdom. And basically, absorbs the mana from several Grand Magic Zones. So imagine, like, somebody absorbing the mana from the Seabed Temple, the Yultim Volcano, the Witch's Forest. Now, I'm not really going to go too much into the story. I will say that, you know... It is kind of a generic time travel story overall. I mean, there's there's an ending and then there's a real ending where you can complete the story as Yami. I, I'll combine those two as the main stories. It's good. It's not great. Time travel stories are usually not very good though, because it is pretty much, I would say, lazy writing. And yeah, that means I do partially think that Avengers Endgame was lazy writing. It still worked and it was still really good, but Time travel is not something that you should do that much, and still, I guess it is good. It was, it was good. The story was good. It made sense, and it was cool to see a young Yami fighting alongside the younger Black Bulls. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it is an incredibly fun game, and how it basically, like, the dynamics of it, you have health and armor, health auto-regenerates after a short time, you can do combo spells, you have spells from characters in the series, but one thing from what I can tell is, you know, I don't believe that elemental advantages are in effect, like, are in effect. So, like, if you play as Noel, who is a water mage, if you go against Magna, who's a fire mage, I don't believe that Noel has an extra advantage over Magna in this game because Magna is a fire mage. That would honestly be potentially broken in this game, but overall, it feels one of the best things with the gameplay is you actually feel like you're playing as these characters. Now, a lot of times in, like, let's say, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, the characters feel pretty similar to each other. And yeah, they have their own attacks, like from the series, but sometimes it doesn't feel like you're actually playing like Krillin or playing like Goku. Whereas in this, since all the characters have very different spells and magic types, all the characters feel super unique. And whenever you play as Yuno, you feel like Yuno. Whenever you play y Yami, you feel like Yami. Whenever you play like Mary Leona or Julius, you feel like you're playing as them, the characters from the anime and the manga that you've been reading and watching for a while now. And that's really one of the strengths of this game, is each character feels incredibly different from the other. Whereas, like I said, in like Fighters or in Dragon Ball's universe, to me, it feels like all these characters really i mean of course some characters are pretty different but there's a lot of characters where they feel very similar whereas in black clover quartet knights each character is super unique each character is really unique to like master and become really good at and that's really in my opinion one of its strong suits the gameplay is really fun and next is the graphics which is going to be a really short portion of the video the graphics they're nothing to write home about i'd say that the graphics are on par with late playstation 3 or early PS4 graphic like quality of games. Not great, not terrible, but I mean graphics to me, you know, graphics, animation, art, as long as it's manageable, it's not that important to me. To me, graphics are just icing on a cake for a video game. You can have an amazing game with pretty bad graphics. Graphics don't make a game. Like you can have a game with the best graphics, art, and animation ever, and it can still be shit. You can have a game with the worst graphics, art, and animation, and it can still be really good. So the fact that it's like average graphics, maybe even a little bit below average, doesn't ruin the game for me. But of course, you know, it could still be way better. If you compare this game's graphics, art, and animation to Jump Force, Jump Force is way ahead. But still, that doesn't make the game for me. Next is the multiplayer, which is the most underrated part of this game. It is incredibly fun. Incredibly fun. Now, to explain how the multiplayer is in Black Clover Quartet Knights, it is literally like Overwatch, but with Black Clover characters. You have to capture a crystal, and then you have to escort the crystal to the other side of the map. There are other game modes, basically like Capture the Point, and stuff like that. And so yeah, it literally plays like you're playing overwatch but with black clover characters so like this is why i said earlier if you love black clover and you love overwatch you will love this game and while the multiplayer is absolutely amazing because you know there's combo spells there is 
it's just really fun like you can you know there's healers because people have uh, healing magic support mages it's super fun and it, it just feels like you know if you get an entire group of people playing with each character being a character from the black bulls it feels like you're squatting up with the Black Bulls and fighting bad guys. It's super fun. And it is really teamwork oriented. But you can still play solo and get like the pretty much the full experience. The only bad thing I'd say about the multiplayer is one, it is kind of hard to find matches with because the game died. Kind of died. I mean, I, I can still find matches. I can still play. It's just, it's not like Call of Duty where I can just press begin match and then I'm already with a full group of people what usually happens is I'll have maybe two or three people in my lobby and then the rest will be filled with bots but still it's pretty fun to play even against bots and one other thing that's my critique for the multiplayer is matches seem to go by pretty much way too fast like they definitely should have rounds maybe or something like slowing down the pace a little bit or making the map a bit bigger because for example, if you capture the points for the uh, crystal carry in the capital map, you have to move like only not even like 200 yards. You have to like escort the crystal not even 200 yards to win the game. So if you have a good squad, you can capture the crystal, which doesn't take that long. Then it will like take two minutes max to get it to the other side and win. And then it's game over. Crystal carry should probably be a game that has multiple rounds like maybe best two out of three wins overall same with other game modes where like you might wait a long time to get into a match and the match is half the time it took to get in now this really isn't the fault of the game this is the fault of bandai for not marketing this game i know for a fact that with this video there's gonna be people in the comments saying i didn't even know there was a black clover game and if you look at the trailer for Black Clover Quartet Knights, you can find a lot of comments of people like, what the hell? There's a game for Black Clover? Like, what's really interesting, guys, is, you know, people who watch my Black Clover videos, they're not normies. If you're watching anime content on YouTube, you're pretty much more than a casual fan. And so these are non-casual fans of Black Clover that are, well, this is like when I would post videos on Black Clover and I would have gameplay of this game as background video and people were like what game is that what the hell is that there's a black clover game every single time i would post a video of black clover that featured black clover court tonight gameplay in the background and it always gets several comments usually 10 plus of people saying what game is that what there's a black clover game so the fact that people who are more than casual fans don't even know that there's a black clover game is at the fault of the marketing for Black Clover Quartet Knights. This is a game that was dead on arrival because nobody marketed the game. Bandai like didn't even try, which was stupid because now Black Clover has gotten so much more popular to the point where this game, if they had marketed it, would have made them not only so much more money, but would have been so much better for the community of this game because I can guarantee you if they actually marketed this game the game would still be at least alive. Now, not saying like extremely vibrant and doing amazing, but it would be alive, it would not be dead in the way that it is. And it's really a shame. And ever since this game has come out, people have been saying, oh, I just want a Black Clover game that's like Xenoverse or Fighters, where it's like a 3v3 or a 1v1, no objective or whatever like that. And I cannot disagree more. This you know the overwatch style perfectly fits how the black clover lore works usually when there's fights you travel in squads because squads gives you multiple ways to fight multiple ways to win and it lets people who are not that strong in 1v1s like vanessa to be an absolutely powerful mage because of her support so i think the fact that you have objective based multiplayer squad based game modes in black clover actually really fits now you could still have 1v1 matchups as a game mode but should not be the focus if they ever do a sequel or a new black clover game because honestly it works so much better as a overwatch style game and if they actually marketed the game if bandai had actually been smart enough to do that not only would they have made so much more money but 
this game would be way more alive, like I already said. And the multiplayer would be so good. Now, I remember when this game came out, and I remember I played the beta first. I'm like, wow, this game is amazing. I love it. Uh, I'm probably going to play this over Paladins, which, if you know, Paladins is also a game that's really like Overwatch, like similar style. And then the game came out, was alive for like two days, and I was playing a lot. And then people stopped playing, and then, you know, there was no marketing, so no more people played. And when I say the game was alive, it really wasn't even that alive because there wasn't much people playing from the beginning. But you compare this game to like Jump Force, Black Clover Court at Nights shits on Jump Force. If you compare the Black Clover Court at Nights game to the My Hero Academia game, that My Hero Academia game was absolute garbage. Now, of course, I still like it because I like My Hero Academia. But as just looking at it objectively, non bias My Hero Academia one's justice is a absolute fodder to your game black clover court at night shits on it but anyways guys this game is likely on sale right now so i'd suggest you do go buy it i might be doing live streams in the near future with it and where i can you know play with you guys but let me know your guys thoughts on the video let me know you guys thoughts on this game if you've already played it please do leave a like comment and subscribe hope you guys all have an amazing day plus